Okay, six o'clock Chicago time, four o'clock California time, seven o'clock New York time, 12 o'clock London time. Hi everybody, I am Michael Angelo Badio and we're doing another installment of the No Boundaries uh, sequence of events. Uh, hey, Ben, how are you? I see uh, Jenny there, Paul, Kevin, of course. Kevin Osborne is one of the great people, one of the owners of Sawtooth and the whole conglomerate Chromacast and Go DPS Music. Uh, hey, Diana, how are you? Okay, we're uh, just waiting a little bit to get some people on. Hey, Ben. Okay, wait. I'm going to play Smoke on the Water, so get this out of the way. Now, I'm using an ES series. This is under $200, and I'm using a 25-watt sawtooth amp, and it's got the greatest clean sound. It's got the baddest reverb ever. Okay, so let's get Smoke out of the water. Smoke on the water, out of the way. Wait, smoke out of the water, out of the way. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're done with that stuff. Now, I've seen some pretty cool versions of Smoke on the Water, but nobody plays the bass like M.A.B. Now, this lesson today, okay, hey, Ben, surviving? Thank God. Yeah, you know, this is, we're, we're in really crazy times. Um, one of the things, being a student of history, um, I know one thing. If we were, uh, if this was not 2020 and 1920, you know, it, it was a pretty wild time in the United States. There was a lot of prosperity, but they did have the stock market crash about eight or nine years later. And, uh, you know, every era in history is pretty crazy. You know, I mean, what would have had a what would it have been like in World War One? We wouldn't have had Wonder Woman like the movie. And, and so. You know, everybody that, that lives on this planet lives through some pretty intense times. We're in intense times. But I wanted to do something, you know, that that gives back to people. My whole life, I've given back to you, to the guitar community. And so let me, this lesson today is about playing jazz. See, when I first started guitar, do you think I went like... <laughs> rock I played jazz I didn't even know my guitar teacher just taught me some chords and then we started doing these songs like and I'm all of a sudden I'm learning G major 7 E minor 7 C6 and then I'm learning all this stuff as a 10-year-old. And I'm like, he rock, man. Rock like sucks. But then I'd start playing all this stuff. And girls are like, that's really boring. Like, that's like so boring. Like, I'm like, well, what's so boring about it? I'm playing like a C6 chord. A minor seventh. G major seven. That's like like advanced chords. I'm like, oh, it's boring. I'm like, well, what do you like? And they're like, <laughs> now people notice that I bang my head when I'm doing these lessons. Do I ever do it live? No, never. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> but you know the reason I'm doing this. 
There's no reason at all. I just like to do it when I'm sitting here because there's, it's just me alone. And I'm like sitting in this big studio going, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? So what I do is I headbang to amuse myself. So why am I saying all this stuff? When I, in very early in my musical life, I started playing piano when I was five years old. And what I did was I actually copied my mom. I watched her play and I would play, like there was this song called My Wild Irish Rose, like Wild Irish Rose. this song like my wild Irish rose down down now now no no and, and I listened to this as a little boy I was literally five years old and I said I, I looked at the keyboard I looked at the piano and I said don't down G C C D C and I saw it and I visualized it I could see it there and I heard it and I said, I, I think I can play this. And my mom didn't teach me it. I, I learned it myself. And then she played some more advanced chords that I didn't understand at the time that I didn't do, but then I did later. And what I did was my musicality at five years old started to, to, um, to be enhanced because I, I listened to my mom and I said, you know, I know that. I can hear those notes. What I didn't know at the, you know, being a little boy was that they were intervals. And so, and what I started to learn as a very, early, as a very uh, young boy and a very early age, intervals. And I started to be able to hear like G, E, E, D, C, 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 B, A, G. And so, now I can't sing it that loud, but I heard it. Now, you know what? I've got a, I've got somebody that's a, a special guest today. His name is Joey. He has been dying to talk to you. Hello, everyone. This is Joey. I'm Joey. Hello. And Joey is going to be here. Here's what I'm going to do, Michael. I'm going to lend a hand to your show tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, I actually made that one up uh, before we got online. But... Uh, what I learned as a boy was my ear, that my ear started to take me places that I, I understood. I said, you know what? Okay, I get this. G-E-E-D-C. Now, what did that have to do with jazz? When I, first, when I was five years old, I played piano. Okay, who's on? Okay, Ben. Joey for president. Yes, yes, yes. Here's my, you know what, you know what I think about politics today? If musicians ran the world, we would have world peace. Because it's always been peaceful with musicians. You know, and there's always this thing, you know, like, oh, dude, like, oh, Michelangelo can play faster than me. He sucks. But then there was like me saying, well, dude, this guy is like, got a hit song. He sucks. So we were always like, well, you, I love you, but you suck. So we always knew where everybody stood. And, and, uh, but the point of it all is that with musicians, I mean, I've dealt with, with all different kinds of creeds, races, you name it, for my entire life. So if musicians ran the world, we would have, wait, let's get that finger pointed straight. There we go. But you know why? Because Facebook flips everything around. So it kind of screws me up. We would have world peace. Other than that, you're never going to hear me talk about politics. Let's talk about jazz. Now, when I was a kid, I was 10 years old, I started playing guitar. If you go to my YouTube page, and I highly recommend going to my YouTube page, I have started a new series. Everybody knows that I do very advanced guitar things. I mean, from the very beginning, you know, the first A minor arpeggio ever, ever played on an instructional program was me. I didn't say I invented it, but that was it. And so I have always been known for doing very complex and advanced instructional programs. Well, I, I've 
understood something that a lot of modern players are not doing right now. They're not taking it back to the basics. And so this is what I'm doing now. This is my new mantra. Start at the letter A and go through the whole alphabet. So this is what I'm going to do. Now, Metal Method Productions has done all my instructional programs from the original Speed Kills, which still is, is as viable today as it was the day that I did it, which is in the early 1990s, literally 1991. So we're looking at almost 30 years later, it's still valid. Why? Because I know history. See, that's the one thing too. I understand, I understand history, I've studied history, and I have given you my interpretation of using those, those ideas, those uh, methodologies to today. So here's what I did. On Metal Method, okay, let's see, who else are we looking for? Okay, Anthony, how are you? Now, I want to say a few shout-outs. Uh, there's a shout-out to Alexis. I see she's online. Um, there's Andy, Arthur. Uh, there's Tanya. There's a whole bunch of people online here. So it's going to get more and more as we progress. We just started this. But let me... Now, I am using a Sawtooth ES series. This is made out of Sycamore. This is so light. I love this guitar. I'm going to actually be on tour with this guitar. I just love it. Now, here's what I learned. If you are a metal guitar player going... Okay, those down pick E's. Now, I have a very clean sound. I'm using a Sawtooth 25-watt amp with the coolest reverb. Listen to this reverb. It's almost like a slap back delay. It goes like did it. Like did it. I love this verb on this amp. And this guitar just so. Oh, sorry, hit the off button. It's just got that like elastic sound that strats have. So, everybody knows we can... Everybody knows that I can play really fast. But one of the things that I did when I first started guitar is I learned jazz chords. Now, here's what I'm going to show you today. If you are a metal player, now sorry, I'm looking close here to see. Okay, we have Mark watching. Thank you for all you do, Paul. Okay, Slinky, I'm going to order one. Yes, Ben. Hey, Ben. Uh, Ben's a great friend of mine uh, from Texas. Now, here's what I'm going to show you today. I am playing a sawtooth guitar that is very incredibly <laughs> reasonably priced. This is under... Two hundred dollars. Listen to these tones. It's got that out of phase sound that. You know, it's just got this incredible tone to it, and so do the ants. But it's also got the. Got that back pickup, the bridge pickup sound. So here's what I'm going to show you. Um, I played a Metallica medley that has millions and millions of views. And when I played Master of Puppets, I had criticism to, dude, you didn't like down pick it, bro. I don't care about down picking. I really don't. I don't. I don't care if James Hatfield is the greatest down picker on planet Earth. I do not care. And I'll tell you why. Because if you didn't watch a video of me playing it, you have no idea if I'm down picking or up picking. 
see, this is where people get into this thing like, well, dude, you like didn't do it like, like, like the bad, dude. Why should I? Why should I? Why should I capitulate and play like James Hatfield? He wrote the song, of course. But I'm doing a tribute in the Michelangelo Badio way. So what does it even matter how I pick it? Because I'm doing it my way. But I also sped up the tempo. So let's see James play my tempo of it. You can't do it that fast because I wanted it. I See, I don't care because I care about the sound and I don't care about how I get it. Now, this is why I want to relate jazz progressions to the rock and metal player. One of the things, and here's what we're going to do. I highly recommend you go to my YouTube page. It is chock full of information. We're going to post this after, uh, you know, the lesson is done. We're going to post it here on Facebook, but we're also going to post it on YouTube. One of the things that I learned very early on is these incredible jazz chords actually helped me play rock and metal better. So here's what I did. Again, if you think of, of, of teaching guitar like an alphabet, A, B, C, D, a lot of guitar teachers start somewhere in the middle. And then, and, and plus, one of the reasons is they're not pros like me. You know, I, I, lo I, think, it, I think teaching in general is one of the most noble professions ever. But when you get teachers that don't have real world experience or only teachers, they're some of the most jaded people on planet Earth. And see, I am a teacher that comes from world experience. I've said this a thousand times. I've been to 58 countries, 58. Now there's over 200 countries in the, in the world. But I, I've been to China over 15 times. I was the first artist ever to be on communist Chinese TV. I was, I, I've been in front of the center stone of Stonehenge. I've seen more of England and the UK than most British people. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I have traveled so extensively around the world and you know why? From playing a guitar, from going, different tuning like a lot different tuning than when I play no boundaries but the point is this I have toured the entire world for almost 30 years playing music I want to play no no police nobody telling me what to do and and I have seen so much of this planet so when I talk to you I'm telling you based on experience of a lifetime that is not about just being a teacher, but about a teacher with real life world experience. Now let me tell you what I did. One of the last instructional programs, in fact, I think it's the last one I did with Metal Method Productions. I've been with Metal Method since the original Speed Kills. Metalmethod.com, get this one. I did a program called 25 Jazz Progressions. Now why did I do this? I think it's imperative. You need to learn this. If you are a rock or metal player, or if you are just a person trying to work on jazz and just like, where do I start? Because my teacher's like having me start like, you know, like uh, this. You know, they're, they're starting at I mean, look at me. I did in my first solo album, a fusion song. I started off like this.
Wawa, that was actually used on a news show in Chicago. I have a lot of my music that has been uh, used for like television, uh, you know, radio, TV commercials, you know, movies. And so here's what I want to show you today. I did a, a, an instructional program called 25 Jazz Progressions. And here's what I did. I started it in C. Now, a lot of these progressions are what's called a one, six, two, five. And when you take a major scale and you go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, six, two, five. So it's a standard progression. Sounds pretty simple, simple in the 50s, but here is what you do in jazz chords. C major 7. Then you have A7 sharp 5th flat at 9. D minor 7. And then you go back to the G7 sharp 5th flat at 9th chord. Now I use this, this is progression number 1 out of 25. This is a 25-week course, if you want to do one a week. It's available at MetalMethod.com. I highly recommend this for everybody who wants to start. Because, see, one of the things that you want to do is you want to start listening to the sounds of jazz. See, the because, you know, the, the, it's like saying something like investing in the stock market or investing in your life. The best time to start... 20 years ago. The next best time to start is today. And so today we are going to start this. So what you do is this. C major 7. A7 sharp 5th flat at 9. D minor 7. G7 sharp 5th flat at 9. So it's like this. Now what, and what we are going to do on my YouTube page, this is very focused on YouTube today, if you want to see the full lesson of, I'm going to show you two progressions today, go to YouTube and check it out. We're going to be posting it in the next couple days. It's part of the Metal Method program that shows the 25 jazz progressions. You know, it's really a shame because, you know, it's called Metal Method. So, you know, everybody wants to buy Speed Kills, the original version, and, you know, it, it sells and 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 sells! But this 25 jazz progression program is really amazing. So, you have a one. Let's turn it up. One, six, two, five. Then here is a substitution. See, one of the things in jazz is you can take one chord and substitute that chord for another. So instead of C major 7, the second time around, I play E minor 7. And why? Because a lot of the chord tones are in the C major 7 chord, except for one thing. There's a D. So it makes it C major 9. You don't have to know that at first. This first program is about listening and playing. Playing and listening. Say it. Now I use that sharp. I use that sharp seven flatted ninth all over because it's a really important chord in jazz. So. What I do is I love tricked out endings. C major, C minor, D minor seventh, C sharp, seven flat nine, the Jimi Hendrix score. But anyway, it's here. And then it cadences and resolves to this. Which is a C major seventh chord. 
Now, one of the things that's great, whether you're a, and especially with rock and metal guitar players, you are not required to know the theory behind it. You listen and get the sound. So, now are there, okay, I'm, I've incorporating economy picking. I'm going to try and answer some questions here, okay? Now, Joey has a couple. He's going to be the one that, okay, jazz doesn't sound as nice on a Strat. Joey thinks this is stupid. It's stupid. Yes. Um, anyway, so let's see some other questions. Hell yeah to the tricked out endings. Yes. So anyways. Okay. Now, one of the things, if, if you don't think it sounds tricked out, let's switch guitars. Let's put on this guitar. This is my new M24 series. If you see any other companies, call it an M24 or something close. Like, my former guitar company! They're just trying to rip me off and trying to rip Sawtooth off. So anyway, here we go. See what this person is saying. That, oh, like, he like, needs to like, have hamburger pickups, man. Okay, so we've got this. This guitar is called the M called the M24 in black. It's a satin black finish, which means it's a flat black. Look at that. That is bad. I just love it. I absolutely love it. Now it's got a maple neck, 24 frets, non-locking trump. So anyway, so let's get see now here's something too. I am not an elitist and I'm not a purist. When you get these people, oh, like, oh, I think it can only be played on this. Like, don't you know who I am? Like, I have this exalted status in the guitar community. Shut up! Shut up, literally. Keep an open mind. This is one of the problems of not only students, but prognosticators. It's like, shut. So here's what I do. I, I love to help you. I've helped people my whole life. I, and I'm working on this, I cannot stand condescending or people that think they're so intelligent when they, when they write really smart ASS comments. And, 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 you know, because I'm pretty quick on my feet, I'm a highly intelligent person, and, and I have a great sense of humor, I, I could bury them. And, and, and I, I mean, with, with my witty sarcasms going back, I don't do it. I, I hold myself back. You know what I do? I delete the comment because I think it's stupid. You know, it, it, and it tells me that these people don't want to learn. See, I'm always a student. I, I'm not a prognosticator, meaning, meaning I don't say, oh, yes, I think, I think the election is going to be like this. Oh, oh, I think this is going. Oh, I think the stock market's going to crash. Oh, I think the COVID-19 is going to take over the world. Well, let's see. COVID-19 is like a 99.99% you're going to live. So, like, how is it going to, like, ruin everything? You know, it's like you get people that just want to hear themselves talk. Now, I like to talk. Joey likes to talk. Hello. But I'm here to teach you something, not to say, you know, because listen to the humbucker pickups on this. It's a $250 guitar. Okay, you have the neck position. <laughs> You have the middle position, which are both pickups on the bridge. Okay, so I guess it sounds better with humbuckers. So, Here's what I'm going to tell you about this lesson today. If you are a metal guitar player, if you are a rock guitar player, don't worry about the theory of it. Don't worry about the theoretical applications of it. Just play. Just play the progression. You have this. C major 7 and 
And the way Metal Method does it, they're so professional. So I talk about it, I play it, I play it slow, and then you get to see the tab. There's animated tab, so you can watch it. C major seven, A seven sharp fifth flat at nine, D minor seventh, G seven sharp fifth flat at nine. So. One of the things that I say in this uh, program is that the tempo and the way you play it is up to you. You can go like... Or you can just do... And then what I did is I used E minor 7th as a substitution for C major 7, but you don't have to know that at this point. That's theory in the future. It's great. These are perfect to be able to practice. There are chords in jazz, for example, a C sharp augmented 11th. It is the chord of death. It is the chord of doom. bad boy. You've got to put your thumb over two two strings and then you've got to play so you've got to use all four fingers on the top and then you've got to use your thumb over it. It is an angry chord. I'm mean. I'm pissed off. exactly going to play smoke on the water with that. <laughs> Not going to exactly sound so good, is it? But when you hear this. Beautiful. Here's where it goes to. It goes to C major 7. So you hear this. Listen. resolves the resolution and so here's what I'm saying when you work on these progressions don't worry about the theory don't worry about anything other than playing these chords because one of the things that's the hardest to do is to go from chord to chord to chord to chord to chord and then go but see, one of the beautiful things about jazz chords, watch. C major with the third in the bass. C minor with the third in the bass. D minor seven. So you're going, it's, a, it's called voice leading. When you lead a voice, like I talked about this in one of my uh, lessons uh, recently about Blackbird, where you go, Now, Paul McCartney does not have a degree in music, but their producer, George Martin, was a brilliant orchestral composer. And my dad used to say, the Beatles never, they, they, they weren't smart enough to write that stuff. But I have a different take on them. I think they did. I just think their ear told them, and especially McCartney on Blackbird, it's so well written theoretically. I, and I'm, when I'm talking about music theory wise, it is two part writing in the style of Bach. You have a, you have a chromatic bass line with what's called contrary motion on top. See, parallel motion would be this. But that's not what McCartney did, he went. That's parallel motion. I mean, that's contrary motion. It is not parallel motion. And what that is, it's a beautiful two-part writing. So what I did in these jazz progressions is I did kind of a similar thing. And so 
All you have to do is start listening to the sounds of jazz. That's all you have to do. Learn the progressions, play them, play them accurately. And, and I give different examples on the actual instructional program of how to play the rhythms. You know, you can, you can kind of bounce it and make it swing. You can play it like a ballad. I mean, you can go. You do all this stuff, or you could go. So there's all sorts of ways to play this. Okay, Mary Beth says hello. Hello, Mary Beth. Okay, now I want to go to the second jazz progression. Now this is in the key of F. Again, it's a one, six, two, five. And then I go. And then what I did was I added a substitution afterwards. And again, these are 25 jazz progressions. And so I highly recommend that you go to the YouTube page. When we're done here, we're gonna post it by tomorrow or the next day. The actual lesson where I show these. Now, I'm going to, uh, uh, so I hope you got something out of this because this is the Michelangelo Badio background. Um, I, you know, I've, I've been in music a long, long time. But, you know, I, I think I still look pretty darn good. And, and earlier today, I just worked out for about an uh, hour and a half. You know, I did 45 minutes of cardio, weights and all that. I keep very good, you know, I, care, I take care of myself. I've got one body and I take care of it. And so that's why I'm still here. Uh, my new record uh, is doing phenomenal. It's very different from my other albums. And I... I I very much take care of myself and my music. And so, and this is, it's really important to me, but I also, I have a great time. Now, we're going to answer some questions here. So, we've got Joey here. Now, Joey, I was, he evolved from workshops because I found that I would start talking and nobody would ask any questions. And I'm like, does anybody have any questions? And I'm like, no. And so I said, okay, Joey, we need somebody to ask questions. So all of a sudden, up came this hand. Hello. Okay, hey, Joey. Hello. Hello, Michael. How are you today? And so Joey has some questions here. Okay, somebody said, what do you eat? Well, I'm on a vegetarian kick, but I don't, I don't, I'm not a vegetarian. I eat everything in moderation. Because when you tour as much as I do, when you're in China and they put beef on the table and that's it, why not? You know, I mean, I eat everything in moderation, but I'm lean, I'm thin, uh, you know, I, I'm in great shape. And I find that, you know, I, I can't be a vegetarian. I just... Uh, it's not my my thing, you know. I do it sometimes, like right now. I'm on a vegetarian kit because my nephew graduated uh, high school the other day, so we had big filet mignon. So I've had beef for the last week or so. And uh, let's see, how do you start a solo in that progression? Somebody said I ate a bat. Okay, Mark McNally, one of my all-time greatest friends, Joey Martin. Okay. I'm going to sing the song, Little Joey Martin went to school today. But I don't know the rest of the words because we don't have it. So, da, 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 Joey, da, 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 da. But he likes to go by Joey. So anyway, let's see some other questions. Uh, Blair Bryant, good jazz. Okay, Zappa riff. Okay, you want to hear a cool Zappa riff? This is a really simple riff by Zappa. We used to jam on them. We used to jam on that all the time. Like... That 
was a great question. Okay, let's see. Which scale will you use Joey with the jazz progression? Now, that's a good question. Now, when you play, I'm going to show you guys something that I learned. I think one of the best ways to learn jazz riffs, and I played this before, is just steal from other people. For example, Django Reinhardt, like this. <laughs> So you do all sorts of things. Um, if it's in major, start in major. So that is another lesson. The first lesson is to listen to the sound of the chords. That's the first thing that you need to do. Listen to the sound. See, what I did is I did 25 jazz progressions. Now, some of them are just A's. Like, you have an A here, you have an A here, you have an A here. So you can make it an exercise or like... You can just play different A's around the neck and understand that they're... It's called an inversion. For example, an A here... Of the chord is here. Now there's another note, the third of the chord. The third is right here. That's how was it, how I was able to do this on progression number one. Watch. Or like this. one of the other progressions in these jazz progressions. Uh, this is uh, either three or four. It goes like this. And so what you get is one of the things that I love about jazz chords is watch how little my fingers move. And I've talked about this before on lessons here on Facebook. Watch. This is G6. This is C sharp diminished 7. Now just move two fingers down again. A minor 7. Then move one finger. Watch. That's D9. A minor 11th. G7 flat 5. G major 7. See how it resolves? And that, one of the things that, that, um, I've learned about teaching. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. Listen and play. It's like in, when, I, when I study French. Écoute et répète. Listen and repeat. Bonjour, comment vas-tu? Quel heure est-il? Je m'appelle Michel. Okay, so I learned different phrases and I didn't extrapolate or or think, well, what is this like it'll mean like in the grand picture of life? Like like what is like the meaning of like all the French? It's a Latin based language. Just learn a you know you know learn vino un baño <laughs> learn the important things wine, beer, water and the bathroom and then you have it down. But that's what I am talking about in jazz chords. You really need to watch this on YouTube because I'm going to show you the progression fast. You know, normal speed, I'm going to show it to you slow. And you get to watch the animated tab. I'm going to show two progressions like I did here. And you get 25 in the Metal Method program. Now, getting back to this guitar. This is literally a $250 plus dollar guitar. Listen to this. That is the neck pickup. The second uh, selector. Both pickups on the back. I mean, listen to that. surf music.
music. I talked about this last week, too. I love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, just to go like this, like... <laughs> I ever learned on guitar was Secret Agent Man. And when I was 10 years old, I played this at a recital. I went... <laughs> Another song called Wayfair and Stranger. song and we used to do this when we were kids in bands and, and uh, you know literally I was 12 years old and playing all this stuff but to go on stage and go <laughs> it was almost to me like going yeah! I loved it I just loved it when I because I did a recital when I was uh, 12 and it was at uh, the music store that I used to take lessons at called Carnes Music. And I remember I was one of the last people. And everybody's like, you know. Uh, you know, they're playing like these songs, you know, tequila and all this. And, and it was so boring and so bad. Everybody was falling asleep. And I went there and I slicked my hair back. I had this big Elvis Buffon. And I stood there, and I had these really freaky clothes. <laughs> My parents thought I was nuts. I'm like, Dad, Mom, can I please buy some, like, new clothes? So I had these really crazy, like, checkered pants and stuff. And they were, like, called hip huggers, where they were really low on your body. And so I had these, like, monster, like, bell bottoms. And, and I went, like... <laughs> My guitar teacher going playing the rhythm like and I went like I went like this extensive background in really crazy stuff because you know you hear my music now and especially the new record it's so metal but I didn't come from a metal background I came from a very musical and, and chordal and, and melody driven background now here's one of my riffs from intermezzo and I'm going to show you the musicality of what I do you know because I played a little bit early of no boundaries like in fact somebody was asking me uh, recently, a bunch of people to actually explain what I do. Now, I'm tuned to concert pitch, A440 is just standard tuning, but I did a riff. It's on my album called Intermezzo, and the song, the song is called Oceans of Time. And Chris Adler, you know, that played in Lamb of God and Megadeth, the drummer, 
uh, liked it so much and the producer, Josh Wilbur, they said, we want to use this on the new record. So we use this on my song, More Machine Than Man, but check this out. <laughs> And what I did was I used a seven string, so it starts low. But I mean, just listen how cool this progression is. Now, it continues on, but I use that in the song. Um, I get feelings from music, and I've talked about this before, but even something like this with jazz regressions. I mean, I even figured out crazy things, like twinkle, twinkle, little star. I mean, I have chord melodies for all this crazy stuff. But what I can tell you is this, if you work on the two jazz progressions that I'm going to show you, go to my YouTube page. And if you want the full program, 25 jazz progressions with metal method. Now, I, I want to talk about a couple other things too here. Okay, yeah, somebody wrote Machine Gunetti, Time Traveler. Yeah, those are all, you know, songs that, that I wrote. Time, obviously, Machine Gunetti is with Jim Gillette with Nitro, but, but Time Traveler is my own. And I've written a lot of great music over the years. And, you know, one of the things that, that I think about now that I'm older is my legacy. And what I would like all of you to do is to look back in my discography and to listen to how, not only how great the music is that I've produced, but how different it is from record to record. See, I'm not a one trick pony, you know. You know, people try to typecast you and those are critics that can't. They are the ones who can't, so they criticize the ones that can't. But listen, for example, More Machine Than Man, my latest album is completely different from Intermezzo. Intermezzo is completely different from Hands Without Shadows. Hands Without Shadows 1 is completely different from Hands Without Shadows 2. And then go back to the earliest solo album of No Boundaries, it's completely different than all of them. And so, and then my second album, Planet Gemini, uh, it was so progged out. That's where the song Time Traveler came from. Uh, I, I really love that song and, and I played that. There, there, are so, there are versions of me playing it live on, on uh, line, but I've written hundreds and hundreds of songs that have been published and used. In fact, right now I've got to fill out some documents uh, to use the song Freight Train again. Uh, Jim Gillette and I wrote, you know, some really cool songs and, and they're still being used in movies today. I mean, it's crazy and, and, and video games and, you know, all sorts of things. But my background is extensive. And I have never been hurt playing. And so when I tell you today that I work on these jazz progressions, I love sawtooth guitars. Um, you know, people know me, they know that I'm not a company hopper. They also know that the owner of my former company died three years ago. I don't know this company that has the same name. They, they have they're nothing in common with the company I knew. But that doesn't mean that, that uh, you know, that I, I, I couldn't represent, you know, I can't wear colors of something I don't believe in. I believe truly and 110% in sawtooth guitars. Uh, we, are, we are releasing signature models later this year that are just incredible. And the only thing that stopped them was this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And, and uh, 
you know, everybody flipped out. The media won. You know, they freaked everybody out. I mean, is it anywhere? If you look at the, you know, everybody say, oh, there's all these new cases. Well, how many people are passing away? It doesn't matter. Everybody's getting sick. Well, I got the cold, but I didn't die from it. And so, you know, we don't know. All I know is when I go out, I still wear a mask until somebody doesn't tell me, uh, you know, so, until somebody tells me not to. But I can tell you this. This has really been a blessing for me because when you have something this extreme that happens in your life, there's a philosophical saying, the only constant is change. So you have to ask yourself the question, are you going to change or not? Are you going to stay the same? If you stay the, the same, you're going to get behind because other people are going to pass you. It's kind of like a cell phone. If you're going to stay the same with a cell phone, I have the new iPhone 11 Pro, but in, in the year 2023, that's going to be old news. So if I want to stay the same, hello, hello, Joey, yes, can I help you? So if you want to stay the same, you're going to be behind. Change is not easy, but if you embrace change and say change is the only constant, then it helps you adapt a little better because I never wanted to be one of these people that said, oh, back in the old days. Somebody said, okay, I don't know. Somebody put a YouTube thing, said best song. I don't know if it's theirs or not. Maybe it's mine. But, uh, okay, all I do is change. Uh, be water, my friend. Water's fluid. But the one thing about water is unless you control it, you don't know where it is. Uh, you know, but they say like situations are fluid. But here's what I can tell everybody here today. Work on these jazz progressions. I'm going to be going on the road. I've got a tour of the United States. If we can still do it, I'm going to be on tour in Europe. My skills have never deteriorated. And the reason is because I practice what I preach. And I don't unlearn the past. I don't erase the past. I studied Mozart, I studied Beethoven, I studied Shostakovich, I studied Jascan Dupre, the great French Renaissance composer. Uh, and, and he was a Renaissance counterpoint. It was Renaissance counterpoint. And see, one of the things in our world today, when I studied music, I studied, they called it the church modes, where you had like the... <laughs> was the Ionian mode. It's the major scale no, or the Dorian, or the Phrygian, or the, or the Lydian. Oh, the sense of wonder. E -D -fum -fum. I don't like that movie. Why? I don't know. Joey doesn't know why. He just kind of criticizes every once in a while. But the point is this. I learn the church modes. And then when things were outside of those basic modes, they were called passing tones. And they had names for them, appoggiaturas, auxiliary tones. Like an appoggiatura would be like a non-chord tone, resolving into a chord tone. Okay, so in other words, they, they looked at these basic, but see right in this world, we have what's called synthetic modes. I was actually criticized by saying I don't use enough scales and modes. And, and I thought, what are you talking about? There's, there's over 2,000 scales. Well, yeah, I can make up a scale right now. I call it. That's a synthetic mode, and I call it the COVID mode. It's the mode of death. It's the mode of, it's the pandemic mode. Do you want to learn the pandemic mode? mode. You know what the chord is to it? I don't know, but it should sound weird. Die! 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 Well, of course, I'm playing diminished chords, but the point is this. Anybody can make up a scale nowadays and call it what they want. That's not the way I learned it. I learned a very organized way in my head, and I'll tell you what, it works. And it's simple, and it's to the point, concise, and, you know, anybody can come up with a synthetic mode. 
anybody. You can call it an enigmatic mode. You can call it a P-log scale, which they are really scales and, and modes. But when, when you want to make something up, anybody can theorize anything. It's kind of like, I justify whatever I want to justify. That's what it's like today. But that's not the way I learned it. So if you learn starting from letter A and moving upward, it gives you a concise uh, point of reference and it's going to help you be a better student of the craft. Because, see, you know, I have a saying that, that you can't think outside the box unless you know what's in the box. And, and I really truly believe that because so many times you get an instructor that says, well, it's this mode or this mode or this is not right. For example, just something like five modes in a major scale. Watch this. Mode one. I mean, five positions. Watch. Position one. Position two. Position three. Position four. Position five. That's it. That's every single note in the G major scale that's on the fretboard at every different position. But there are a lot of people that say, oh no, there are seven positions. Oh, it, it's not true. That is a, that is a part of what, and, and it's a nice philosophy, but it's not letter A. It's letter H or letter J. It's farther along the line. And so if you get anything out of this workshop today, besides sawtooth guitars, well, listen to this amp, 25 watt. I mean, it just sounds so good. It's so pleasing to the ear. Uh, Sawtooth makes incredible equipment. And then they have another company called Chromacast where you see the string dampeners. I highly recommend if you do a lot of tapping to use the string dampener. Watch. So, and they're so silent. So instead of using a fret wrap or a sock, you can't, you can pull it over the nut. But this nut right here is the problem. See, with, with this, with the string dampener, just pull, it, just pull it up and move it out of the way. I can... I can do what I want, and I can use all the open strings, plus I can dampen it to do all sorts of tapping and anything I want to do to block out the extra string noise. But again, I highly recommend going to metalmethod.com and getting these 25 jazz progressions. What I've told you week after week after week after week is what I actually do. That's why my instructional programs are so popular. Not, there's a few reasons. One, I studied, I know history. See, I don't want to erase the past. I don't want to tear down things. I want to say the past is something that, you know, everybody didn't think the way we think today. That's impossible. You can't think of the year 1693 the way you think of 2020. But I can say this, that I learned from people in the year 1693 because there were people that were 17 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old, that were on the cutting edge of that year, and they brought things to the table that still stand the test of time, and that's why. That's why my education has been so vast and why I'm still here and relevant today. So anyway, to make a long story longer, Sawtooth Guitars Rule. The people involved with the company, you cannot get better people in the music industry, people who know more. We have the all different age groups. There's there's young people involved. There's veterans like myself. We have Vinny Apice, Rudy Sarzo, and myself as the three main endorsees. They are signing also a lot of young bands uh, because, but they want people that, one of the things I can tell you about an endorsement if you think that you're going to come to a company and say, 
I want to endorse your guitars because I want like some free stuff, man. That ain't the way it works. Want to know the question you have to ask yourself? Why would a company endorse you? What value do you have to the company? It's not the other way around. You know, anybody can get free stuff. I can get all the free stuff I want. It's not about that. It's what do you bring to this company that they can say, I want you as an endorsee because you benefit us. So, and it's just another uh, of one of the ways that, that the world, according to Mikey, thinks. But practice these jazz progressions. I showed you two of them today. The details are going to be on YouTube. Practice, practice, practice. I'm Michelangelo Badio. See ya.